Welcome to the Copeland Coaching Podcast, where it's all about turning your job search into a slam dunk. Your host is Angela Copeland. Welcome to the Copeland Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Copeland. On the phone with me today, I have Andrew Chimka in San Francisco, California. Andrew is a senior product manager at LinkedIn. Andrew is working to connect people with opportunity by building and scaling LinkedIn's jobs platform. Andrew, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Angela. I'm really excited to share all that LinkedIn's doing to help job seekers. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm so excited to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, so as you know, um, LinkedIn has some of the absolute best functionality for job seekers. I mean, just really the best. And when we're looking for a job, there's a couple of sort of places that we typically go. And one is that we can, you know, look at the jobs tab on LinkedIn and we can apply there. Um, Another is that, you know, we can have a really great profile and maybe a recruiter finds us um, because they just happen upon our profile. But the other piece that I think is a little newer that I don't know that everyone knows about is a feature called Open Candidate. And I know this is something that you've worked on. Help us to understand, you know, what is the Open Candidate feature and why should we care about it? Yeah, definitely. I love Open Candidates. It was one of the uh, things when I first joined LinkedIn we were working on. So um, our vision at LinkedIn is always uh, to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And so right now we have around 630 million professionals on LinkedIn trying to build their careers. Uh, and so one of the things we really try to get right is we putting the right opportunity in front of the right person at exactly the right moment. And Open Candidates is like one of the best examples of how we do this. So with Open Candidates, it's kind of in a way of just like raising your hand up and saying, hey, everyone, I'm looking for a new position. And what you can specify is exactly what you're looking for. So um, for instance, I could say, hey, everyone, I'm looking for a new product manager role, and I'm actually looking for you know to work in New York. I'm looking to switch positions and, and move over to New York. So you can specify the type of role you're looking for and also kind of the location and a few other things. And the awesome thing about this is uh, on the other side of the coin, we have t- like thousands and thousands of recruiters who are searching for uh, candidates on LinkedIn, as you've mentioned. And what they're trying to find is two things. One, the best candidate they can qu- possibly find. And two, ensuring that that person will be actually interested in speaking with them and switching careers. So by basically doing this as a job seeker, you're kind of r- removing that uh, that kind of concern from the uh, recruiter. And so recruiters really love this feature. They always filter and just look for those that are open to new opportunities. So if you are job seeking and looking to change a career or switch industries, it's really important that you update your profile, add exactly what you're looking for, and turn this on. Um, and then recruiters will start coming right into your inbox. I've ac- accidentally uh, definitely tested a few times just testing out bugs and features. And turned it on, and uh, you know, gotten a few outreaches from recruiters, and had to say, "Oh, sorry, I was just testing. I'm, I'm not looking." Um, so it's really, really effective and, and very, very fast for for job seekers. Wow, that's really interesting. So say that we, you make first of all, you make a really good point about if we're looking to switch cities or switch industries. Um, you know, this is a place where we can tell, you know, Open Canada is a place where we can tell recruiters that we're looking to do that. So that's, I, I think that's a really important point. Um, but say that we're sold and we've never heard about this before today. And we're like, wow, that's great. I need to turn that on. Where do we actually go in LinkedIn to turn on Open Candidate? Yeah, there are two places where you can go. Um, One is uh, on your profile. So you can go to your LinkedIn profile and uh, there's a little section right below uh, your intro. um, And it says, you know, turn on open to new opportunities and you're able to tap that and uh, specify that you're open to new opportunities. Another place is uh, where you go to search for jobs. So if you click the jobs tab, you'll see a, um, a little section there that says career interester. Um, and you'll be able to click on that and go in and actually turn on and signal who you're looking, uh, that you're looking for new opportunities um, and, and specify exactly what you're looking for. So there are two big places, profile and also uh, the, the jobs tab, as we call it internally at LinkedIn. Um, but it's just a little section that says jobs. Uh, so. Yeah, no, that's really great. And that's helpful. Well, so when I've, I've actually given talks where I'm in front of an audience and I talk about um, Open Canada to a room of job seekers. And the question I always get <laughs> without a doubt is, will my current boss find out that I'm looking for a job if I turn on, you know, Open Canada? And 
you know, I mean, the number one thing that's important as a job seeker is that our job search remains a secret from our employer because we don't want to get fired for job searching, um, which unfortunately some employers sometimes do. Um, So if we have that concern, what should we know about Open Candidate? My uh, top advice here is ensure your profile is always up to date with your current position. Um, uh, Our priority number one is always to ensure job seekers' privacy and trust. Um, And so if you always update your LinkedIn profile, then what we're able to do is ensure that your current employer could never see that if you were open to new opportunities. So a really simple example of how this is done, and and there's a lot of uh, magic that also happens behind the scenes, but if, uh, say, I'm a recruiter at company uh, A, let's say I work at company A and I'm searching for uh, job seekers, um, I will never be shown anyone who is open to new opportunities at company A. And we also do a lot of other things where we tie subsidiaries and, and companies that have relationships and recruit with each other because obviously they have relationships with us to recruit. Um, and so we, we have those relationships and uh, we do our best to hide that information. So that's, that's my best advice is to ensure that your profile is always up to date. That'll also help you with your job search. Um, and uh, that's how we uh, keep our job seekers' privacy and trust uh, secure. It's- that's good. I mean, you make two really good points. Uh, the first one, I was actually going to ask you, I was thinking about it as you were talking. So I'm based in Memphis, Tennessee, which is the headquarters of FedEx. And FedEx, though, has a lot of different operating companies. And each one has a different, basically, company page on LinkedIn. Um, and so I was kind of thinking, gosh, I wonder if a recruiter from one operating company could see candidates from another one, but it sounds like LinkedIn at least tries to sort of tie them all together uh, so that you don't sort of get caught up in that. Is that right? Yeah, I think the important thing to remember is uh, LinkedIn's super powerful because we have both sides of the, the coin, right? We have job seekers who are looking for opportunities, and we also have recruiters and companies that are looking for talent. And so what we have is we have information about the companies that are working together to recruit and where they share information and where they don't. And so that's how we're able to provide that protection for job seekers is uh, job seeker security and trust is, again, just like the thing that we care deeply about and ingrain in all of our products. It's super important. I guess the thing this is dependent on is that as a job seeker, we have to set up our profile correctly because if if we don't hook it into like the FedEx, you know, company page, maybe LinkedIn doesn't realize that we work at FedEx. <laughs> I would yeah. I would have to say that's probably what it's contingent on, is it not? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very great point. That's the that's my best advice to ensure if you if you're worried about your employer finding um out about your job search, which you know is definitely reasonable, is just ensure that your profile is up to date before turning on the setting. Um and uh yeah, we'll 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 take care of the rest. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I see what you're saying about make sure it's up to date before. Uh that that totally makes sense. I think in general it's important to keep it up to date all the time because if you suddenly update your whole profile one day for the first time in 10 years, it's a lot more suspicious than if every once in a, you know, every few months you're making sure that it's still accurate. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, so the other thing is there's a, a jobs tab and we were kind of talking about it a little bit. And when, as a job seeker, we can kind of search by different things like job function, company, there's a lot of different things. And one thing I've noticed that's really cool, I, I don't think this has been around forever because um, I've only started seeing it in the past couple of years, I think, but LinkedIn will actually tell us like how we rate against the other job seekers who are applying for that job. So if there's, I don't know, 300 people who've applied to a job, LinkedIn will tell us whether we're in the top 10%, the top 25%, whatever. It'll kind of tell us how competitive we are. And I think this is really interesting. It, it gives job seekers a lot of encouragement to like apply for things that they're really qualified for. But I'm curious from a LinkedIn perspective, like how does LinkedIn figure out how competitive we are? Yeah. So one of the uh, really powerful things about LinkedIn is right now we have over 20 million jobs active on LinkedIn, right? And that's just right now. Uh, Every 30 days, generally jobs close and new ones open. And so if you think about it, for years and years, we've had millions and millions of jobs, and we've also had the recruiters behind those opportunities uh, contacting candidates and hiring candidates. And we've seen uh, job seekers update their profiles once they've gotten positions. And so we really understand deeply what uh, recruiters and uh, hiring managers are looking for, and also how job seekers' profiles and information actually stacks up against that. 
Um, and so one of the most powerful things you can, you can think about when you're actually looking at those job details pages and looking uh, and trying to understand job description, do I fit? Am I a good fit? Do I meet these qualifications? Um, this actually tells you, hey, compared to your profile and the job that we're looking at, we use a lot of natural language processing to kind of distill from the job itself to understand the requirements. Compared to the applicants who have already applied, uh, how do you stack up? How do you rank? How closely do you match to that job? Um, and so, as you know, information is power. Um, and so what, we, what we've done is basically taken all of our learnings and insights and tried to arm our job seekers with that information um, to better their search. And so this is a premium feature. Um, and it, and it, whenever you're viewing a job as a premium member, you're able to see this information. So uh, it's re really, really cool uh, and also provides you some information on what skills or things you may be missing or may have that puts you in that top criteria or um, the middle of the pack or wherever you might be. So if you do see that you're missing skills or you need to update your profile, it, it also is a great reminder of that. Oh, that's good. You know, I didn't even think about the fact that it was a premium feature because um, I guess I'm a premium member. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just see it. But, you know, you make a really good point about the missing skills because I think sometimes maybe we look and we see that we're in like, you know, the top 25% and we have all these like missing skills. Say they're asking for 10 things and it shows that we have five. Maybe we look at the other five and we're like, oh, I can do three more of those skills. Like I just, it's not in my profile. And maybe that kind of gives us incentive to update our profile at the same time. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. And also gives you a lot of information for, you know, what are employers looking for? What are the, what are the um, people who I want to work with? Uh, what kind of candidates do they want? And so um, as job seekers think about that, they just get a lot more insight that hopefully sets them up for success, not just applying to this job, but, you know, that next job or the job after that. And so um, I think it's, uh, it's a pretty awesome feature in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's great. And, you know, I not to go on a total tangent, but the other thing this reminds me of is LinkedIn puts out a monthly like workforce report. And I, I recommend this to people. I recommend it to someone yesterday because um, what I find really interesting about it is that you can drill down by city and you can look at what shortages there are in terms of skills in certain areas and what surpluses there are in certain like in certain cities. And I think it can also help you to kind of, if you're thinking of moving to a new city, to look at like what cities am I likely to be in that top 10% of candidates? Like, you know, where does, where are the skills for what I do and where's the shortage? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, the workforce report is incredibly helpful and definitely a, a great parallel to uh, this feature on a specific job. Um, it's like, how do you be strategic about your job search? Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing our best to arm job seekers with as much knowledge as possible. Um, so we're sharing that information that we have with as many job seekers as possible. Right. It's incredible. I mean, you, you kind of start off with like the general workforce report and then you can drill in sort of like by location and there's tons of data and it's, it's released once a month. And whenever I see it, and like, this is not obviously not an ad for LinkedIn, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whenever I see it, I'm like, how do like, this must be like tons and tons of effort to put this report together, but it's so useful for job seekers. It's, it's really incredible. Um, well, you mentioned something too, as you were talking about this feature, uh, which is that jobs tend to be up for 30 days. Was that just like a random number that you were just kind of throwing out there, for example, or is that, uh, is that something that's like an average or where does that come from? Oh yeah, I was just more mentioning an average. You know, um, it's about a you know an average month is about thirty days, and so um, we know jobs you know on average are posted monthly. Um, so it's just more of a uh, you know average figure. Oh, that's a really interesting way to think about it. Okay, cool. Well, so the other thing that you know I'm talking to job seekers about a lot is figuring out how much they should expect to make. I mean, very often we'll go on job interviews, and the very first call is with someone from HR. And the person will often say, like, how much do you make or how much do you want to make? And, of course, that question is evolving and by state. But um, we have to sort of arm ourselves with salary data to be able to have this conversation in a professional way. And one of the things that LinkedIn does sometimes provide is a salary estimate for particular jobs to give us an idea of what, you know, what this job might pay. And, you know, I've been asked this question a ton of times because... There are other sites where, say, the salary data is self-reported, and there are some sites where self-reported by the, the people who have the job, and there are other sites where um, the salary number comes from the, the poster, like the HR person who submits the job. I'm curious, when LinkedIn provides salary data, like where does that come from? 
Yeah. So uh, to echo your earlier point, salary is one of the top career motivators. Uh, and it's one of the first things like I want to know about a role and also I um, want to be armed with information when I'm having that discussion about what are my salary expectations. Um, you know, salary is important, not just because uh, it's what you make, but it also allows you to pursue what you love, both like at work and or, or off work or, you know, with your family. Um, so I uh, definitely agree. And LinkedIn is um, a huge proponent of salary transparency for those reasons specifically. Um, and many companies have also found that greater pay transparency helps close the pay gap. Uh, so we're also really excited about ensuring that LinkedIn is transparent uh, with salary. Um, where our salary data comes from, uh, there are three main places. The first is, as you mentioned, uh, members can provide their salary information privately, um, and we're able to aggregate all that information together so we can show salary estimates. The second is we uh, get third-party data to supplement that information and ensure that uh, member-reported salaries are accurate. And the third way, uh, we also use uh, poster provided salary. So when jobs are being posted on LinkedIn or created or however they're posted, um, we actually pr collect that salary information. So we actually collect all three and we're able to often combine that information to even make our estimates much, much better. Wow. I didn't even know that. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> really great. Well, so say we're listening and we're like, oh, cool. We can report our salary and help you know, LinkedIn have more data. Where do we where do we go to self report salary data? Yeah, so uh, there's a few ways. There's a salary home. Essentially, you could go to like LinkedIn.com/salary, or uh, if um, you know, I'm sure not everyone will remember that link. But uh, if you go to LinkedIn.com and you go to the jobs tab, as we've been talking about, there's a a link right on the center there um, that'll say LinkedIn salary, and so you click that and you're able to access our salary tool and um, you know provide salary information and get uh, salary insights out. So. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool and very useful, and it's fun even just exploring and seeing what other titles or you know what what I might make in you know five years if I continue uh, down the same path. Um, it really arms you with kind of that information, um, which is which is great. And you can see between regions um, how do the salaries differ. Uh, so again, to the earlier point of figuring out where do you want to position yourself um, and where should you work. So mm -hmm. it's really really great. Oh, I think that's great. And you're right about salary transparency. I mean, I think. One area where we as job seekers struggle is that we assume sometimes that, you know, a project manager at this company makes the same as a project manager at that company as long as the jobs are similar and as long as the experience level is similar. Um, but sometimes it really varies. And so I think, you know, you have to do your homework and you can't assume that the amount that you're making right now is a reflection on what you might make in the future. So if you if you go out there and you look this stuff up on LinkedIn, it can really, really help you. I mean, I've seen job seekers more, and this is kind of an, an anomaly, but I've seen job seekers more than double their salary um, just by being informed, you know, when they're switching from one field to another. And the reason they were informed was because they've done this kind of research. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the things that LinkedIn also does is we collect... Uh, sort of bonus and RSU information or other incentives when we're collecting that salary information from both employers and those self-reporting, um, which, you know, as you know, like salary is one aspect of the compensation, but um, oftentimes, you know, different companies, they could uh, provide lower salary, but more bonuses, uh, just depending on their compensation structure. So uh, it's, uh, it's one of those ones where when sometimes you look at salaries and you're like, I wonder why these are so different. Um, there are also additional information, which we try to make public and available for job seekers to have. Oh, that's so good. I mean, I have seen, to your point, a lot of companies on top of a salary, they'll give an annual, like a performance bonus. And mm -hmm. and once, like one company, that performance bonus might be like 10%. And I've literally seen another company that their performance bonus will be over 40%. And a lot of times, like you're initially just having conversations about salary. And there is like this whole other part of the compensation that you're missing. Yeah, it's important to ask about uh, those other factors because as you're having those conversations and discussing salary expectations, um, you know, if, if they say, oh, actually our salary is lower than that, um, there may actually be another component of it that brings it up to a more reasonable level or uh, those things might actually be open for negotiation. So it's always important to just uh, be aware of all the different components that uh, compensation may vary by company. And uh, with the LinkedIn tools, uh, we're trying to ensure that job seekers have that information. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and as we're talking about research in general, it kind of makes me think, I think, although I hate to admit I have not personally used this, um, 
I think that there's also sort of like a ratings and review sort of component on LinkedIn that allows job seekers to view the ratings of a company. Is that true? Am I, <laughs> am I going out on a limb here? I don't know. Uh, we definitely have company pages on LinkedIn and, and information about those pages, um, but we don't have necessarily reviews uh, to, okay. to that respect. We do allow companies to be able to showcase themselves and provide information and quotes from uh, employees, um, but uh, and not reviews like that. Okay, you got it. That that makes that makes sense. Well, you know, I think one of the things I've seen in terms of statistics about how successful someone is when they first start has a lot to do with how educated the person is about the company. And I I think it's, as you're deciding what to apply to, it's really important, you know, to go in and and look at that, that company information. I think that's probably more of what I was thinking about. Well, as we say, we've figured out what we're going to apply to (laughs) and we go through the process of applying um, on LinkedIn, there is a new feature that shows up. And when I say new, I think it maybe came out a year ago, but we have the option to actually ask for a referral. And, you know, sometimes when I talk about it with job seekers, they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I know about that. I, it's, it's called an endorsement or it's called a recommendation. Um, but I, I don't think it's the same. So can you share with us a little bit about um, what is the ask a referral feature and when should we use it? I love the ask for referral feature. It's one of the ones that I also uh, had a chance to work on in some respect at LinkedIn. And uh, it is like the epitome of what LinkedIn is. Um, so if you think about it, we have jobs, but we also have the largest professional network anywhere. Um, and so members can ask for a referral with a single tap within a job posting. So when they're looking at it, um, if they have connections at that company that they're applying to, we'll show the connections for them and they're able to just quickly tap and say, hey, um, my connection, I would love if you could refer me for this uh, position. That person that they message is able to add a little bit of information and it's submitted along with their application. And one of the things that we're really excited about and to share is that uh, our recent data shows that a referred candidate is up to nine times more likely to get a job compared to other applicants who aren't referred. Wow. So this is uh, one of the most impactful features. And the really exciting thing, I, you know, I've worked at LinkedIn for five years now. And so I'm kind of like a LinkedIn champion. I love, uh, I love the feature because it really showcases the power that uh, the network provides your, jobs, your job search. Um, so uh, yeah, nine times more likely to get a job. Um, it's, it's really, really powerful. That is incredible because a lot of times when people apply online, it feels like kind of a black hole. And this is, this is kind of a game changer in terms of that. Um, I'm curious, like when, say that you apply and you ask for a referral from someone and it eventually it goes, you know, to, to the, like the HR person, for example, how does that referral come through to them? Is it just like attached to your application or like, how does it look like to the, to the HR person? Yeah, so it's it's brought to them sort of, um, you can think of like a message along with the application. So there's some information that that employee shares and uh, it's submitted along with the application. Uh, so um, that way the employer or the recruiter can have some information about, you know, uh, what your connection had to say and, and the recommendation they gave. So I, I do agree that there are um, some con- like similar things like you have endorsements, but those are more ways to kind of validate your you know, skills for other people on your profile. And same thing with recommendations. It's a great way to give you like uh, an opportunity to recommend someone and commend them on, on what they've done. Um, and so not to be confused with referrals uh, uh, here as well. So um, referrals is more just within that job application stage. Um, won't show up on your profile or uh, be put anywhere there. It's, it's more private. Again, uh, when you apply to a job, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that information is private and secure, as we know that's super, super important with the job search. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I got an email, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, about the ask for referral feature from a job seeker. And um, this is not made up. This really happened. <laughs> um, but the person said, hey, I have uh, a connection at XYZ Company and I'm applying to a job there. Should I do ask for a referral? By the way, I don't actually know this person. Like I've never met them. We just happen to be connected on LinkedIn. But does it seem like a good idea that I should ask for a referral? Um, uh, my recommendation was absolutely not. <laughs> um, you should only ask people that actually genuinely know you. But you tell me, like, who should we be asking for a referral from? 
I would agree with your advice. Uh, I think that was the right advice to give. You should reach out uh, to those who, you know, will actually put in a good word for you, right? You're trying to improve your odds of hearing back. And so if that person can't say much about you or can't say anything at all, uh, it's, it, it's not going to help your chances. And so one of the things that a tip or trick that I do, my sister is uh, currently looking for a new role and, um, she, uh, you know, just got her PhD and, uh, she's, she's looking for that new opportunity. And so one of the things I've told her is like, Hey, you may not have connections at this company, but what you probably do have is you probably have some second degree connections with some of the employees. And so if you just create a very simple LinkedIn search and just search for anyone at that company, you'll be able to see who are you second degree connected with. And then once you find someone who you think is interesting or who you'd love to get in contact with and, and believe that they'd actually probably be like a manager or a peer in the future, you can see who that mutual connection is with yourself and you can reach out and ask for a warm introduction. So it's also, if you don't have a, a way for referral, like figure out how your network can be leveraged to create those referrals. Um, so it is, uh, it is one of the features that I, I love. I, I often just find myself like connecting with people and I'm like, oh, it's really interesting what you do over at this other company. I would love to just learn more, even just to build my network for, um, you know, even future opportunities. So um, that's one way to, uh, maybe you don't have a connection right now, but that doesn't mean that you can't have one. That's a really, really, really good point. And I think I just love hearing you talk about it and how you reach out to people because I talk with job seekers every day who are super afraid to do that because they feel like it's it just is going to seem like they're being a pain or they're asking for something and they're not giving anything back. I do think networking is much more normal than we sometimes realize. Um, and, and I think it's not something to be scared of. I do have one question about the ask for referral feature. Let's say I'm applying for a job and I have a really good friend, maybe uh, who I used to work with, and I, I know that they're totally going to help me and they're going to give me a great referral and it's, they're, they're a really safe bet on someone I can ask. But like, let's say that person is not a huge like LinkedIn user and um, maybe they haven't logged in, they haven't checked their account, they're sort of like not paying attention and they they don't actually ever respond to my ask for referral, rec- like my question to them. Does that hurt our application at all or is it just kind of like doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. I mean, your application will still go through to the job um, okay. Uh, okay. just like as it would normally. It won't say like referral unfulfilled or, you know, anything uh, like that. So nothing to worry about there. Okay, good, good. Well, that's that's really helpful. Um, so this is this is going to sound now like an ad, I think. <laughs> this next question. This is a legit question. I get asked this every day, and um, so the question, and I'll explain the backstory. I guess the question is whether or not to get a paid version of LinkedIn. And um, the reason it's going to sound like an ad is because I'm going to ask you to tell me like why and what the differences are, but like legit this question. I get this question at least once a day. And um, because I don't work at LinkedIn, (laughs) you know, I I know that the paid features change from time to time. Um, You know, years ago, I was always kind of using the free version and it was, it was great. So it was fine. But I think if, if you're kind of actively job seeking, I mean, lately I, I use it, I recommend it, but I can't always articulate exactly why we should have the paid version. So you work on LinkedIn and I would really be curious, Andrew, as to why we should get the paid version and and what the differences are. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, my sister, she just got the, I was uh, talking about her earlier. She actually just got the uh, paid version as well um, and uh, to help her with their job search. So with LinkedIn premium, um, there are a lot of features that you get um, that help you with your job search. So uh, I'll, I'll start out uh, just talking through them and, and let me know if you have any questions on them. So one of them is uh, you can see who's viewed your profile in the last 90 days. So um, as you're kind of going through that uh, process and you're, you know, uh, checking out people's profiles and, you know, submitting applications, it's really helpful to see who's checking you back out. Uh, you're also able to take advantage of the job insights that we spoke about a, a little bit earlier, where you can understand, are you in the top 10%, 25% or 50% of the applicants who, if you applied to this job? Um, and then it also kind of breaks down how your skills and your experience and your education also match up to the other candidates applying. So that's, uh, again, a really useful feature. Um, another one is 
you get to unlock LinkedIn learning courses. So if you're on, uh, you know, looking at the job and it says you're not in the top 25% and it shows that you're missing one of the skills that is critical to the job, um, you're actually able to just log into LinkedIn learning and find out, uh, you know, take a course and pick up that skill and get endorsed for it. Um, so that's a really, really, really powerful feature, especially if uh, you're trying to move into the, you know, from top 25% to the top 10% of a prospective applicant to a job. Uh, you also can learn about salary trends. So instead of needing to self-report first before getting insights, you can you have uh, access to it from the start. Uh, you're able to message anyone with an email. So again, back to that networking aspect of LinkedIn and how it really can help you, especially if you're trying to create those referral opportunities that are nine times more likely to help you get a job. Um, you're able to message anyone with an email. And then lastly, you get that unlimited search capability. So you can search as much as you want on LinkedIn um, with no limit. And that obviously helps you find those connections. So those are uh, a list of kind of overview of features. Um, and then, you know, again, uh, you don't have to be a premium member to job search on LinkedIn, right? Like anyone can see any 20 million of the jobs on LinkedIn and ask for referrals. Um, but those are ways that it kind of helps you take a leg up on your job search. That was so helpful. Thank you. So I do have a couple of questions, actually. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so the first one, I'll, this is just a note, this, this unlimited search thing is actually for me has been a big deal because, um, I think part of the reason I initially upgraded, I, I work with job seekers every day and I also give presentations and I, I have a whole presentation actually about LinkedIn and I, I teach people how to use it and I was hitting the limit all the time <laughs> for, her. and I would get the, like, you need to upgrade if you want to keep keep searching. So I do think it's important though, because uh, when we're job seeking, like we're doing so much research on LinkedIn and you need to be able to, to be able to constantly do it. And you also mentioned uh, being able to see who's viewed your profile. I think that's super helpful because if you apply to a job and the company is interested in you, very often they will then look at your profile. So it's, it's just, it's really, really good information to have. Yeah, definitely. I uh, I constantly am checking out that feature and, and seeing who's uh, looking at my profile. Um, so I I personally love it, and I'm not even job seeking. So <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, so and then the other thing you mentioned is in mails. I think that's really really an important feature where you can you can contact people that are not your first degree connections. Um, I think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Do you is it ten in mails a month that you can do with a, a paid uh, a paid subscription? Uh, there are a few different types of subscriptions we have on LinkedIn um, with varying different levels of in-mail credits. Uh, we call them credits in, uh, at LinkedIn, um, but different number of in-mails you can send. Um, I'd have to actually look up the exact number, um, okay. but I can send you that information. Um, sure. Yeah, it's, it's just on the on the page where you kind of choose between the different, uh, are you job seeking? Are you you know looking to hire people? Or uh, uh, There are many different subscriptions you could uh, subscribe to. Absolutely. That makes sense. And I know you're right. It depends on which one you get. Um, I will say one note that I discovered recently that was really helpful is if you run out of your monthly in-mails, I saw that if you go, I think it's somewhere in your settings, you can purchase extra in-mails if you need to. Um, and I don't remember if they're sold like individually or in bundles or whatever, but like on top of the monthly limit. So if you hit it, there there is an option to purchase additional ones from LinkedIn, at least the last time I looked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you need more, you can purchase more. Okay, cool. Well, so the other thing you mentioned is LinkedIn learning. And that makes you make a really good point about the fact that if you have a skill that you're missing, that you can go to LinkedIn learning and take a course. How do you then get sort of endorsed after you take the course? Is it is there like a test at the end or like, how does that work? Uh, well, you'll be able to get a certificate for the courses you take and uh, be able to share that you've completed the courses. Um, and you can ask colleagues for, you know, endorsements or, uh, uh, you know, any sort of recommendation for, for the fact that you've done it. Um, so that's that's one way that you can kind of showcase that you have it. You get kind of a cert certificate or um, you're able to share at the end that you've completed the course. Um, so that, that's one way that you can kind of uh, certify it. You can also just add the skill to your profile after you've completed it. Because um, now when someone interviews you and says, hey, I saw that you have the skill, you can say, yeah, I've actually backed it up. I've taken a course on LinkedIn Learning, and now I know SQL, or I know C++, or 
um, you know, I'm a, uh, I know CAD, the AutoCAD program. So mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's one way to kind of arm yourself with the knowledge and then um, you can showcase it on your profile, on your resume, um, or however else uh, you'd like to showcase it. I recommend you share and that you, whenever you learn, you share it to your network because uh, hopefully it can inspire some of your other connections to take a course or uh, to continue their learning education if they um, are not in school anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really impressive, like LinkedIn Learning, and I think it used to be called Linda. Like, if you if you go in there, it's really incredible, like how much educational content is there and how high quality that content is. So, definitely, if you haven't seen it, I would check it out. Um, I think from the last time I looked, I think that the Job Seeker uh, subscription, the lower level subscription, it's something in the ballpark of like thirty dollars a month. Um, but I believe that it, I think there's like a free trial that you can do first. So, you know, if you're listening and you're, you're kind of like wondering, like, should I do the paid version? I would say, you know, sign up for the free like trial and, and test it out and see how it's, you know, different for you and how it's, how it works for you. Because at least for me, it's been super helpful. So like I said, not an ad for LinkedIn, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, it is super duper helpful. <laughs> so yeah, and, and there is a free trial, so you know uh, it's easy to get started and try it out and see if you like it. So it's it's uh it's it's good in that way. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so let's let's move on. Let's say if we um, if we've applied for a job through LinkedIn, let's say we're one of like fifty candidates or a hundred candidates. You know, LinkedIn has to decide who to show first in the list, and I I almost think of it like a Google search, like when you as a user, when you're searching for something on Google, Google has to decide which website to show first. And I've I've heard rumors that some of the things we can do to show up higher in the list, one would be if we follow the company that we're applying to. And another is if we have connections at that company that we're applying to. Um, I'm curious, is there anything else that we should know that we should be doing to put ourselves at the top, like at the front of this line for the recruiters when we apply? Yeah. Uh, so there, there are two things that we did talk about a little bit earlier around uh, ensuring your profile's up to date. That obviously helps. Um, referrals, again, nine times more likely to be hired if, uh, than candidates who are not referred. So those two are, are really helpful. But another one that um, may be less known uh, are, are these real-time job alerts that we have. So when you're searching on LinkedIn, uh, it's obviously you're searching for the roles you want, right? So I'd be searching, say, I'm still looking to move to New York and uh, I want to get a product manager job there. And I'm searching for New York product manager jobs. I'm able to set up a personalized alert to that. So now I'll get push notifications on my phone, uh, which is basically one of the ones, not just like it lights up on your app, but actually sends you a little message on your uh, locked screen that says, hey, there's a new job for a product manager in New York at this company. And the really exciting piece about this is they're real time. So as soon as that job is posted, within seconds, uh, you're going to get a notification that there's a new job posted for what you're looking for. And the really powerful thing about that is that uh, people who apply in the first 25 applicants are three times more likely to land a job, right? So like when that person posts the job, they're, you know, very, very eager to look at their applicants. And so those that come in the first 25 are, you know, some of the first that are seen and the first that are taken action on. Um, so uh, this way we can help job seekers on LinkedIn who are searching ensure that they're always set up for success as like new jobs get posted. Um, I think we were talking about a little bit, you know, jobs are constantly posted on LinkedIn. And so this is one of the ways where you can kind of step up your game and, and make sure that you're always on top of uh, new jobs that are coming out. Uh, and we do all the work for you. So. Ooh, I like that. These are really, really, really good suggestions. <laughs> um, the thing that you mentioned about being the first 25 applicants, like that's amazing to say. I mean, I, I often say to job seekers that companies are looking for the first like good person who comes to the door. Like they don't, they don't always have time to like evaluate every single person and find the very best possible person. Like they're looking for like the first decent person. And so you can't like if you're person number 100, but you're amazing, like it doesn't matter if they already hired person number 10. Like it's just, you got to be quick. And I, the other thing I think that's worth noting that kind of came to mind as you were talking through the job alerts is that LinkedIn gives you the ability to save jobs. And, you know, what's funny is a lot of times companies will take sometimes months to call you for the interview after you've applied and all of a sudden you're like looking like, wait a minute, what was the job description for that job? Like I, and you, you could maybe like go out and Google it and you'll find pages that say this job has been taken down. 
um, and I've seen that personally be tricky. But one thing I really like about LinkedIn is that you can save the job. And then even after the poster has taken it down, it's still in your save jobs. So you can, if you get called for an interview later, like you can still go back and see the job description. Yeah, no, yeah, you can definitely save jobs and um, these alerts you can also save and manage. So as you know, maybe your job search evolves or you start looking for something else, you can turn off the alerts or change your alerts or um, always access the save jobs and even your applied to jobs on LinkedIn. Um, so those, yeah, those are definitely features that we um, feature prominently within the jobs tab. Absolutely. And the other thing you're talking about applying quickly, both in the app and on the website, you can filter by jobs that were posted in the last 24 hours or the last week or the last month or whatever. But I encourage people to go in if they're actively job searching and like just take five minutes like every single day (laughs) and go in and look at, you know, those alerts that you have set up and filter by the last 24 hours so that you can see what just posted. Um, And like you said, be like one of the first people online. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, if if you're one of the first 25 people, you're three times more likely to land the job. And and so what we're trying to do with these alerts is essentially take out some of that work. Um, you know, the filtering to see which of the jobs that are new, and also personalize it a little bit. So that way, um, you know, you don't have to do the search and then also add the filter. It's it's like as soon as the job is posted, uh, and it's truly real time. It was a it was a great engineering feat on on our end to ensure that as soon as that job is posted, it is push notified to you, and you can ensure that you're that first person to apply. Um, and so I'm really excited about it. It was a really fun project to work on um, at LinkedIn. Oh, I bet. I feel like the folks who work at LinkedIn, especially on this part of the products. I mean, it must feel amazing because you're actually making. A difference in other people's lives. <laughs> You're not just selling some random product. Like this is this is actually like life changing for people. Yeah, it does make it really fun to come to work every day. Well, so another thing that's really important, right, as we kind of go through this process, is to have a, a really good LinkedIn profile. And I get questions all the day, every day. Actually, I got one yesterday. Do I really have to fill out my LinkedIn profile? Do I really have to put a picture? I really don't want to put a picture. I don't like having a picture. I I, I don't use Facebook. Like, you know, um, I, I get a lot of pushback, and um, my feedback is: you absolutely have got to have a profile, and you absolutely have got to have a photo. <laughs> but um, from your perspective, what are some other things when we're trying to make our profile great? Like, what should we do? Yeah, so you you mentioned the profile photo, which is a, which is a great one, and uh, we know that you can get up to twenty one times more profile views with just a photo. Um, so I completely agree with you. You definitely should have a photo. Um, there are about there are three other things that I like to highlight always. Um, always ensure that I think like the first one is always ensure that your profile is uh, not like buzzwords and full of, you know, kind of just generic things. So one of the things on my profile that I have is I write that I'm passionate about poverty alleviation and economic empowerment. And so those are two things that are kind of unique. Um, I don't think many other people have that on their profile. And it's something that I'm personally passionate about. So it helps me avoid some of those buzzwords. And it's and it's unique. So Every year, LinkedIn publishes like the most common buzzwords posted on LinkedIn. And so there's some things like strategic or passionate or expert. Um, And so it's not wrong to have some of these words on your profile, but uh, just don't think by adding those that it's going to help you stand out. Add something unique, add a flavor of your personality or something that you're truly passionate about. It could even just be a hobby that you're interested in that helps uh, your profile stand out when you're applying and also gives a connection or a way for a recruiter to talk to you about um, something you're interested in that may be something special and, and definitely will help that recruiter m- remember you across all of the candidates that they talk to. I think this the second piece that I'd give advice around is ensure that you always have relevant skills. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. You're mentioning like, you know, continually refresh, continually update your profile. Uh, you should always make sure that as you learn new skills or you get new projects to work on, you come across new skills, um, you know, make sure you add those. Uh, and one of the things that uh, is in testing phase, phases right now is we allow you to take a skill, access, skill assessment. And with the skill assessment, you're able to actually add a little verified skill. And so this is in testing phases and going to be rolling out over the next couple of months. But um, it's another way to ensure that your skills are always up to date um, and that you can showcase what you're proud of and you know what you've worked hard to learn on your profile. I think the last one, uh, we have talked about this a lot, but again, grow your network. Um, constantly 
whenever you're in meetings with people or maybe you meet friends or peers out at a house party or a dinner party, um, you know, think about how can I connect with those people? Because maybe right now it's not important for your career, but you never know in a year or two where you may be or way, where you may want to change your career to. And uh, those connections can come in handy. So uh, again, like if you had that connection, you could ask for a referral uh, and we would remind you and say, hey, you're connected with so-and-so and, -so, and um, you're able to ask for a referral. And you may have forgotten about that connection or how you met the person. So those are the three ways. So, you know, avoid buzzwords. Always make sure that you have your skills up to date on your profile. And then lastly, continually grow your network. Always try and ensure that your network is growing. And um, those are the three things that I would highlight uh, if I was job seeking to, or giving advice to someone who's job seeking. That's really helpful. And I think the other thing is, um, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, my understanding is that the whole profile is searchable. Like if a recruiter were to go out and sort of search for some particular skill, like it's almost like you should be sure that your profile is from top to bottom full of what you do. Like don't take it for granted that like this is how this is how LinkedIn presents you to a recruiter when they're searching. Is that true? That is true. Yeah. Uh, we we allow keyword search. Um, so you're able to keyword search on profiles for for recruiters. Um, and uh, you know, there there are things that we do to uh, give job seekers the benefit of the doubt. So if you work in a certain position, um, say software engineering, but you don't have any skills on your profile, if we know the company you're working for, we can kind of infer some of those skills and give you um, some of those benefits of the doubt during the uh, recruiter search. So there are there are a few ways that we we try to help job seekers um, as much as possible uh, stand out, even if they haven't invested in and in updating their profile. But it is much better when you do update your profile and, and the recruiter is able to see those explicit skills listed on your profile. Oh, that's good. Well, so most everything we've been talking about today, well, I think everything has been all about the internet and online and, you know, using the web and, and apps. But LinkedIn recently announced something that's really exciting that helps small businesses and job seekers. And really, it allows the business itself to download sort of like a help wanted sign that they can actually put in the physical location where they have a business to kind of attract job seekers. And so I'm curious, you know, what sort of made LinkedIn want to, you know, work on this feature? And from a job seeker perspective, like, what should we know? Like, how does it work for us? What made us want to work on this feature was that we know uh, hires really, really like to have everyone who's interested in their application in one place. And so what we were aiming to do is uh, allow those hires who have, you know, help wanted signs on their storefront and, and want to advertise in that way, be able to still have all their applications in one place because uh, it helps them with their uh, review of those applications. It also helps job seekers ensure they're not missed, right? So if you maybe submit a paper application, but the uh, hire is now just looking through LinkedIn and looking at those applications, you may get missed or, or vice versa. And so uh, as part of the post the job flow on, on LinkedIn.com, you can click work and you can click post job. You're able to post the job on LinkedIn and then we provide you a customized uh, help wanted sign that you can download. There's a QR code on it and also a short link. So that way, when you paste it in your um, window or tape it in your window or wherever you put it, uh, job seekers are able to scan the QR code with their camera on their phone or just visit the short link on their on their browser on their phone and quickly apply to your job. That way, now as an employer, you have all of your applications in one place. And as a job seeker, you can ensure that, hey, your application is put in the place where the hire is going to review all the applicants and you won't be missed. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I had someone ask me yesterday, do small businesses really post their jobs online? I really feel like online is only for big corporations, but I think they do. I mean, posting jobs online has become so easy. Um, and, and this, I think, really goes a step further to really help that small business owner connect to qualified candidates. That's really great. Um, well, so where, Andrew, where can we go to learn a little bit more about you and the work that you're doing at LinkedIn? I mean, just check out LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, my team's working hard so the right jobs find you. Um, we've uh, redesigned the jobs homepage to streamline uh, LinkedIn Jobs in a single search uh, and have done a lot to help uh, essentially just job seekers have a great experience on LinkedIn. Um, and so if uh, you're part of a small business, uh, we also have a LinkedIn small business page um, that you should follow and a small business blog um, where relevant content for you uh, is there and, and help you grow your business. Uh, so that's the main place. And also, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. So, you know, feel free to connect with me uh, or reach out to me. Again, I love growing my network and connecting with people who are passionate about helping other people get jobs or just, you know, uh, in general, 
uh, want to learn more about LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me. And not only that, thank you for the work that you're doing at LinkedIn. I know I have personally benefited from it and I know all of our listeners have too. So I really appreciate you coming and sharing all this great information. Of course, Angela. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. And thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed the episode today, please don't forget to help me out. Go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the show. The more subscribers we have, the easier it is for other people to find the show. Thank you for listening to the Copeland Coaching Podcast today with your host, Angela Copeland. Tune in next time to get more great tips on turning your job search into a slam dunk.